Welcome to this service of Thanksgiving. This week on Thursday, our nation celebrates a national day of Thanksgiving. And this year, for many of us, our Thanksgiving celebrations will look very different from what we had hoped or planned. And yet, there is still a need for us to give thanks because as people of faith, gratitude is at the very heart of our faith. We're called to give thanks in all things because God is present and at work in all things, sustaining and providing for us. A couple of announcements before our worship begins. Uh, this coming Sunday, November 29th, is the first Sunday in Advent, and we have assembled for every household of United an Advent take-home kit. And we hope that you will be watching your Uniter newsletter as well as email for dates and times when you can come and pick up your Advent home kit. This time of worship will include the celebration of Holy Communion. You are invited and encouraged to make a table ready in your home with bread and wine or with crackers and juice, whatever it is that you have available. We make ready to welcome Christ who comes to us in this meal and at these tables of Thanksgiving. We remember also that Thanksgiving overflows in lives of generosity. And so at this time, I call on Ross Hammer from our stewardship team. Good evening. Um, like Pastor Carlos said, my name is Ross Hammer, and I'm part of the uh, stewardship team here at United. I hope you've been able to follow along with our uh, United and Hope theme mailers and videos we've put up the last couple of weeks. 2020 has been a challenging and uh, full of uncertainty year, but it is just awesome at what, what we were able to do as, um, as a church still. On behalf of the stewardship team, I want to thank you all for your generous gifts to United Lutheran Church. The pandemic has affected us in many ways, and we recognize that your finances might be one of those items that was affected. With that being said, we encourage all members who can to grow in their giving this coming year. If we individually make a small increase to our offerings, we can make a big difference for United Lutheran Church collectively. We are called not only to receive God's good gifts, but also to share God's providing. The Bible calls us to be intentional, regular, and generous in giving. Being a good steward means to manage our resources well, being that time or money, and use them to glorify God. It is our hope that your plan for intentional, faith-inspired giving will again include United Lutheran Church. In the latest mailer, you should have received an estimate of giving card that looks like this. This card is meant to aid you in your plan for faith-inspired giving and help church leadership prepare their budgets for the new year. Please fill this card out and mail it back to the church office by December 11th. Well, we would encourage you to sign up for the automatic giving if you're not already in enrolled, but if you like the traditional way of giving offering in the envelope during the, the services, that is just fine too. And if you wish to do a combination of the two, um, that can be worked out as well. And if you are new to auto giving, the, the office will send out you out a form to fill out. In closing, we are, united in, we, we are united in faith, united in love, united in service, and united in hope. We believe that your giving to United Lutheran Church is an expression of hope in these challenging times. Thank you, stay safe, and God bless. Thank you, Ross. Will you join with me in a prayer of confession? Gracious Creator, you have you given, given us so, so much, much, but too, too often we take, take these gifts, gifts for granted or as something to which we are, are entitled. entitled. You, you call, call us to live in caring, caring community, community, but too, too often, often we place our wants and needs first, first with those of others, others a distant second. second. You call us to share your gifts with the world around us, 
but we are worried that there may not be enough, and our worrying gets in the way of our sharing. For all the times when we mistreat and misuse your gifts, for all the times we assume that we get what we have made, forgive us and lead us back to the path of wisdom. God is a gracious giver. God is gracious in forgiveness. God calls us to new patterns and new life. We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn for this service of worship for Thanksgiving is For the Beauty of the Earth. of reading of Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us join in praying together our prayer of the day. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. Who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices. With love our mother's arms has blessed us on our way. With countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our lives be near us. With every joyful heart and blessed peace to guide us. And to keep, keep us all in grace and guide us when perplexed. And free us from our harm in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Spirit blessed, who reign in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. The first reading is Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, beginning with verse seven. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is Philippians, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 10. I rejoice in the Lord greatly now that at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. And we join in our gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of, of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them to found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, according to Wikipedia, Thanksgiving is a federal holiday in the United States celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November. It originated as a harvest festival, and to this day, the centerpiece of Thanksgiving is, of course, the Thanksgiving dinner. The dinner traditionally consists of foods and dishes indigenous to the Americas, namely turkey, potatoes, usually mashed, a stuffing, squash, corn, green beans, cranberries, typically in sauce form, and pumpkin pie. Now, Thanksgiving is regarded as the beginning of the fall, winter, holiday season, along with Christmas and New Year's in American culture. So says Wikipedia, this most authoritative of online sources of information. However, this year, a traditional celebration, oh, it seems a little out of place, don't you think, with this coronavirus clearly out of control across the country and especially in our state, it's probably not really even very safe for families to gather together. In fact, health experts have told Americans to stay home and not travel. We've spoken with our own children and agreed together that getting together at Thanksgiving is not going to happen this year. Well, there are so many people ill from the virus and the economy is so disrupted, not to mention the election, it seems like there's not very much to be thankful about anyway. In fact, so many people are really struggling, some physically, some emotionally, some economically. Perhaps this year we should just skip Thanksgiving altogether. Now, as I was reading over the history of Thanksgiving, it's interesting to note that it tells the story of a people whose own experience might suggest that they too had little to be thankful for. In September of 1620, a merchant ship called the Mayflower set sail from Plymouth, a port on the southern coast of England. Now typically, the Mayflower's cargo was wine and dry goods, but on this trip, the ship carried passengers, 102 of them, all hoping to start a new life on the other side of the Atlantic. Nearly 40 of these passengers were Protestant separatists. They called themselves saints, whose hope was to establish a new church in a new world. 
Today, we often refer to these colonists who cross the Atlantic on the Mayflower as the pilgrims, and we remember their funny hats and funny clothes. Well, in actuality, after two miserable months at sea, the ship finally reached the New World. There, the Mayflower's passengers found an abandoned Indian village and not much else. They also found that they were in the wrong place. Their plan was to establish a plantation somewhere between Virginia and New Jersey, and they had happened to land it in Massachusetts, which was not their destination at all. Well, the colonists spent their first winter uh, on board the ship. Half the crew died, and a number of the passengers as well, living aboard the Mayflower. Once they moved ashore, the colonists faced even more challenges. Once they, during their first winter in America, more than half of the Plymouth colonists died from malnutrition, disease, and exposure to the harsh New England weather. In fact, without the help of the area's native people, it's likely that none of the colonists would have survived. An English-speaking Patuxet Indian by the name of Samoset helped the colonists form an alliance with the local Indian tribe called the Wapanoags, who taught them how to hunt the local game, gather shellfish, and grow corn, beans, and squash. And so it was the end of their first summer that the Plymouth colonists celebrated their first harvest with a three-day festival of Thanksgiving. We're not actually sure what month it took place in, probably closer to September rather than November. The 46 surviving pilgrims invited their native allies to come and share their feast. Surprisingly, 91 showed up, bringing deer as their contribution to the meal. Well, in spite of their terrible losses to their community and hardships which they continued to endure, their faith in a loving and generous God compelled them to acknowledge God's blessings for their survival and hope for a better future. This was considered the first celebration of Thanksgiving in this new world. This was the first, but it certainly wouldn't be the last. It wasn't until 1863, after two and a half years of a great and terrible civil war, that Abraham Lincoln declared the fourth Thursday of November as a national day of Thanksgiving, inaugurating this holiday into the customs of our nation. Now, Lincoln's timing of such a declaration of thanksgiving as a nation seemed pretty off, actually. Two and a half years of bloody conflict that was tearing the nation apart and with no end in sight seemed like a poor time to give thanks to God. Uh, and yet the country, when they heard this news, they embraced the idea. Perhaps it was out, out of a deep faith in a loving God or out of a desperate hope for the war's end that turned people to God in prayers of thanksgiving. Perhaps for Lincoln, in a deeper sense, he believed that even in the midst of this great violence, God still walked with the nation in their fight to end the terrible sin of slavery. Well, if one turns to the scripture and looks to the Psalms, you can see countless passages where the writer has complained to God of their troubles, their struggles, and their afflictions, asking God to intervene in their lives. But always the writer concludes the psalm by giving thanks to God for the good that still remains in their world and the promise of a new day. You know, one of my favorite hymns at Thanksgiving time is the one sung so beautifully by our music team, now thank we all our God. The author of that hymn was a pastor, Martin Rinkart. Now Martin Rinkart was a German Lutheran pastor and hymn writer who wrote this hymn during the midst of the Thirty Years' War in Germany. It was a very dark time in the nation with armies crisscrossing the country, spreading disease and violence and death and economic disaster for the common people. Pastor Rincart is said to have buried 4,000 people of his hometown in one year, an average of 15 a day, including his own wife. 
Well, it was in the heart of these terrible times that he sat down and he wrote this table grace for his children, later turned into a hymn. He wrote, Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. What wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Here was a man who believed that thanksgiving comes from the love of God, not from outward circumstances. Though the world around him seemed a disaster, his love for God and trust in God's presence and God's care, despite all, inspired him to give thanks. You know, I think it's one thing to give thanks to God when everything seems to be going great in your life, when you've got a good job and your family is healthy and happy and you have the love and respect of friends and family and it's, it's easy to think about giving thanks at those times. But what about when it's not those times? It's not going great at work or you hate your job or you or a loved one has a serious illness or even the death of a loved one in your family and you're not sure how you're going to get by day to day let alone think about the future. Or maybe you've personally made some terrible mistake and your life seems out of control and you wonder even if you have a future. What does it mean to give thanks when life is just hard? The truth of the matter is that none of us is exempt from hardship and loss. None of us gets out of this life without pain and grief associated with loving others and being loved by others. Life is often a struggle, and yet in the midst of those trials, we can thank God, because we know that God has promised to be with us and for us, and that God will indeed help us. And we can trust that God's promises are true for a new life now and a new life in the age to come. You know, the Apostle Paul was one who knew great hardship in his life, lots of struggle, physical and emotional pain and loss, and yet he was able to continue to rejoice and give thanks to God in all things. In our reading from Philippians, Paul wrote, I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have plenty. And in in all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry and of having plenty and of being in need. I can, do all, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Well, God strengthens us despite what is happening in our lives and in the world around us. And so that for this we may give thanks. And so it's good for us to have a day once a year set aside to give thanks to God for all the ways that we have been blessed. Maybe it's materially, maybe it's emotionally, and hopefully, most importantly, spiritually, that we may have faith in a loving God who walks beside us in any and all circumstances. Amen. Yeah. 
mercy, your strong arm will guide us to you, a great redeem forever we praise. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, talents, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. We give you thanks for the work that you have accomplished over this unusual and challenging year through your people at United Lutheran Church. We pray for your continued blessing in our ministry together. God of mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Bountiful God, you feed us through the richness of the land, water, sunlight, and ample crops. Bless all those who cultivate the land to bring forth its bounty, especially our farmers and migrant workers. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you order our lives by your providence. Guide our leaders that their actions might befit the authority entrusted to them. Align our purposes with your own so that our actions reflect your care for the poor and most vulnerable and all of our undertakings bring you glory. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another Send us to love those most in need of your mercy. We lift before you in our hearts all those in need of your help and grace. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. We pray this day for all health care workers who are on the front lines of this pandemic. Give them strength when they are weary and renew their spirits. Help us all to do what we can to lessen their burden and risk. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Hospitable God, you connect and strengthen us through meals and conversations with family and friends. On this Thanksgiving holiday, bring peace to all who are grieving and bring your comfort to all who are not able to share this holiday with loved ones and know the disappointment. Through all that is hard, open our hearts to true gratitude so that we might experience and give thanks for your goodness in all things. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for the love and care we have received from saints who have died and who are now in your eternal care. Inspire our lives and faith through their witness. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In thanksgiving for all that God has given, we offer our gifts with generosity and gratitude, and we join now in our offering song. Praise and thanksgiving, God, we would offer for all things living you have made good. Harvest of sown fields, fruit of the orchard, came from the moon field. Bring 
pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Gathered at the table of our Lord with thanksgiving, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one in Jesus' name, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but, but deliver us, us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. And so wherever you are right now, I invite you to take the bread And this is the body of Christ given for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his love, mercy, and grace this day and always. Amen. Amen. Break the bread when you break the bread. May you always remember the words I have said. When you break the bread, when you break the bread, knowing this is my body broken for you. Come into my house, come on to my table and take of the bread and the cup. My gift is a sacrifice, my gift of love. Take the cup when you take the cup. May you always remember this symbol of love when you take the cup. When you take the cup, knowing this is my blood that was shed for you. Come into my house, come on to my table, and take of the bread and the cup. My life is a sacrifice, my gift of love. Break the bread when you break the bread. Take the cup. Do this in remembrance. Do this in remembrance. Do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, through the gift of this meal, you heal our brokenness and strengthen our spirits, increase our faith in you, and bring us to new life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And receive the blessing. Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him, and abound in thanksgiving and the blessings of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, live in hope. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And our closing hymn for this Thanksgiving worship, the hymn, Let All Things Now Living. Thanksgiving to God the Creator, triumphantly raised, who fashioned and made us, protected and saved us, who still guides us on to the end of our days. God's light goes before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night, till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished, as forward we travel from light into light. God rules all the forces, the stars in their courses, and sun in its orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the deeps of the ocean, proclaim God divine. 
We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing with glad adoration, a song let us miss. Till all things now living, unite in thanksgiving to God in the highest, Hosanna and praise.